Today I'll be showing you how to set up multi-factor authentication for your SSH servers. Now by far SSH with certificates or even RSA keys is the most secure way to access your servers. But no matter how secure your connection is, if somebody let's say to compromise your private keys or your passphrases, then they'll be also able to compromise your servers as well. And you can argue that your keys are secure because they are encrypted and you are using a secure password manager for your passphrases but in reality if somebody were to compromise your own computer then all they gotta do is just wait for you to authenticate and then they'll be able to steal your credentials that way. So that's why when it comes to mission critical applications the best way to combat this is with multi-factor authentication. This way if somebody were to steal your keys and your passphrases then they still won't be able to log in without that second factor of authentication which is in this case your smartphone. So, how do we set up this? I've already got a server up and running, and I can SSH to it with a user build to the demo server, and it'll ask me for the password, I'll give it my password, and I'm able to log in. So the first thing we need to think of is what kind of authentication combination that we want to require. For example, we can make it that it requires a password authentication and a phone authenticator, we can make it require a private key and a phone authenticator, or we can make it require all the three of these. So that's completely up to you to decide. So for the purpose of this demo, I'm going to set up both. I'm going to set up a password authentication along with the phone authenticator, and I'm going to set up a private public key authentication with the phone authenticator. This way, if a user doesn't have his public key authentication set up, they can still use the password and they can still require multiple authentication. So first thing first, I'm going to set up public key authentication. I'm going to exit out of the server and I'm going to use SSH copy ID and I'm gonna copy my ID to the user bill at the demo server. I'm gonna give the passphrase, sweet. And now I should be able to authenticate with my private key. Wonderful. All right, now we've got public key authentication up and running. It's quite easy. Let's set up the phone authenticator. For that, I'm going to switch to the root user. It's just gonna make things easier because we're gonna require root privileges for all of these things. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna update the server, make sure it's all up to date. Then I'm going to install the phone authentication package, which is going to be named libpam-google-authenticator. Now, even though this package is made by Google, you don't need to worry. It's completely open source and you can go check the source code on GitHub for yourself in case that you're a little sus that. Once you've got the package installed, we need to set up PAM. Now, if you don't know what PAM is, it stands for multiple different things, but in the Linux world, it stands for pluggable authentication modules. It's basically the what kind of steps does it require for the Linux system to authenticate that user. In the list of the required steps, for example, one of them is password authentication, we can add the phone authenticator right there. So we're gonna add this Google module, which basically is gonna be the phone authentication module, in the same list that is required to authenticate that user. And we're gonna tell the system that if this authentication block matches, then let the user in. That should be enough, I should be trusted to let the user in. So to install that Google authentication module in PAM, we need to edit one file is going to be in etsy pam.d sshd in this file i'm going to make a few new lines i'm going to add a comment i'm going to type in google authenticator just so i know what it is when i come back to it in the future and here we're going to type in auth for authentication sufficient pam underscore google underscore authenticator dot so and then make another space and in here we're going to type in null okay now what this basically does is that when the user authenticates, it will go through this file a line by line and the first line is going to be the Google authentication line and it's going to basically say that use this Google authentication library and if this succeeded, then this is sufficient for the user to log in. So we don't need to go through the rest of the file because if you put required, it means each authentication method is going to be required. So it's going to require both this and the password authentication. But sufficient means that this authentication method alone is enough for the user to log in. Now what null OK does, it basically says that if the user does not have this authentication method configured, then completely skip this block. So what this does, if you implement multi-factor authentication on your server, and some of your users have yet to configure it for themselves, then this block will be skipped, and the next block is gonna be the password authentication. But if they have configured multi-factor authentication, then it will ask the user for their key. All right, so that's nice and done. Now we have configured PAM, let's start configuring the SSH server. So we're gonna need to edit the SSH config file. It's gonna be in Etsy, SSH, sshd underscore config. I'm gonna make this a little smaller. And here, the first thing I'm gonna search for is password authentication. 
So on this line, I'm going to make sure that this is allowed. Make sure challenge response authentication is also allowed. So I'm going to change this to yes. Also make sure that use PAM is equal to yes and it's uncommented. Then go to the bottom of the file and here make a new lines. Type in authentication methods space and then we're going to type in the authentication combination. So for example, I'm going to type in public key comma keyboard dash interactive. So what this does, it tells our SSH server that the allowed authentication methods is this combination. So it's going to require a public key and it's going to require the PAM module, which is in this case going to be our multi-factor authentication. We can also make it that if the user, for example, for whatever reason, they don't have a public key, we can also make a space, type in password, comma, keyboard, interactive. What this does is going to require the user's password and it's also going to require the multi-factor authentication. So I'm going to save and exit. And to apply this to config, we're going to have to restart our SSH server. We're going to type in system, CTL, restart, SHD. So now that we got everything configured and we have restarted the server, let's test this. So now if I go to a new window and connect the user bill, it's going to ask me for a password, even though that I have public key authentication set up. Now, why is that? Well, basically, if we go back to our PAM file, we basically configured it that way that if the user were to have the Google Authenticator configured, then it will require that. But if it doesn't, then it will require the next authentication method, which is going to be, in this case, the password. Now, if you want this behavior to stay like this, then you can keep the file the same. But if you don't want this behavior, then you can comment out the password authentication this way that it will authenticate the user anyways even if they don't have a password or Google Authenticator, it will just rely on the public key. But I don't recommend it that way. I recommend to at least have both. Though, So if the user has uh, set up multi factor authentication, they will use that. But if they don't have a setup, then they will have to use a password. This way, they will still have to use two factor of authentication either way. So now that we got several set configuration set up, let's see how we're going to configure the users. So each user is going to need to configure their own multi factor authenticator. And to do that is quite simple. All they have to type in is Google dash authenticator and it's a guided process. So it's going to start asking you a question. Do you want time based authentication? Say yes. And then it's going to print out the QR code. It's a little too big. Let me make this smaller. So at this point, grab your phone, grab whatever authentication app that you use. It doesn't have to be Google. I'm going to scan this and then I'm going to type in the code that I see in my phone authenticator. Sweet. Then it's going to give you the emergency code. You can save these. And if you don't save them right away, they are saved in this file. And then it's going to start asking you some security questions to harden your mobile authenticator. For example, it's going to ask you, do you want to disallow multiple users of the same authentication token, which basically means that you can only use this uh, login token once every 30 seconds. So I'm going to say yes to that. And then it's going to ask you, do you want to, to allow to the times queue? Basically, it's going to allow the token to be used to up for four minutes. I'm going to say yes to that just for convenience. Then it's going to ask you to enable rate limiting. I'm going to say yes to that. Basically, this is going to make it much more harder to brute force it because it's only going to allow three login attempts every 30 seconds. And now we've got everything set up. So now if I exit on SSH back to that user, it's going to ask me for the verification code, which is going to be in my phone. So now I'm going to open the phone up. Then I'm going to put in the verification code that I see in my phone. Press enter. And now we're back in. Now, one thing to keep in mind that each user needs to run this Google authenticator script on their own. That's because each user is going to need to use their own phone to scan that barcode to generate their own codes. And once the script is done, one file that they need to keep an eye on is this dot Google authenticator file, which basically has all the secret keys in case that they lose their phone. So this is a really important file to keep an eye on. Now, one more thing we could test out. Let's say, for example, I don't have public key authentication set up, so I can remove that dot sh file. And now I'm going to try to log in again to that user. It's going to ask me for the password first. And then it's going to ask me for the verification code. So I'm going to put mine in. Wonderful. So that's exactly how we want it. We want to use the phone authenticator no matter what. So if the user is using a public private keys or using just a passphrase, they will still have to use their phone to log in, which is exactly what we wanted. So that's all really there is to it. It's quite nice and simple. And you don't really have to stop uh, SSH authentication. You can use this module anywhere. For example, you can use it for privilege escalation. If the user needs pseudo rights, 
then you can also add this uh, authentication module to the sudo pam file. Then if the user were to use the sudo command, then they will have to use their phone authenticator in order to execute the command. So you can be quite creative on where do you want to require MFA. And you can use it in these areas where you feel it needs just a bit more security. So that's about it for this video. It was just a short demo slash tutorial. I hope that you enjoy watching and learn something new. I'm going to peace out and I hope to see you in the next one. See ya.